Good afternoon. This is All India Radio and I am Valsa Williams with the Midday News. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Brazil to attend 11th BRICS summit. Supreme Court upholds disqualification of 17 Congress JDS MLAs of Karnataka but allows them to contest December 5th by polls. In Maharashtra, NCP forms a committee to decide the common minimum program with Congress. Filing of nominations for the first phase of Jharkhand Assembly elections ends this evening. World champion PV Sindhu advances to the second round of Hong Kong Open Badminton. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has reached Brasilia on a two-day visit to attend the 11th BRICS Summit. The summit will take place tomorrow, while the BRICS Business Council meeting and BRICS Business Forum will take place today. Huge business delegations from all the BRICS countries are participating in the Business Forum. During the summit, the leaders will discuss intra-group cooperation for the economic development of BRICS societies. Economic growth and innovative future for BRICS economies is the theme for this year's summit. For more details, we have with us our correspondent, Anshuman Mishra from Brasilia. Anshuman, what is the latest you have for us? Valsa, today Prime Minister's first engagement will be his bilateral talk with Russian President Vladimir Putin, followed by talks with Brazilian President and Chinese President. After this, he will attend the closing ceremony of the BRICS Business Forum. Uh, later, he will attend a welcome ceremony and welcome dinner hosted by Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro. Valsa? Right, Anshuman, economic and financial cooperation has been the most important basis uh, for BRICS. Uh, what does India expect from this summit? If we talk of India, we have trade deficit with uh, almost all the BRICS countries, which Prime Minister is expected to raise during his bilateral and his interaction with BRICS Business Council. New Development Bank is running seven projects in India in government sector. It is expected that India's private sector will also be able to fetch some benefits from NDB. This platform also gives India an opportunity to remain at the core of any reforms in the institution of global governance. Thank you, Anshuman, for the update. The Supreme Court today upheld the disqualification of 17 Congress JDS MLAs in Karnataka but allowed them to contest the December 5th by polls. The court struck down the portion of the Speaker's order by which the legislators were disqualified till the end of the 15th Karnataka Assembly. The Apex Court's verdict paved the way for the disqualified MLAs to contest the December 5th by polls in Karnataka. A three-judge bench of Justices N.V. Ramana, Sanjeev Khanna and Krishna Murari said if elected in the bipoles, these disqualified MLAs can become ministers or hold public office. The bench deprecated the manner in which the disqualified MLAs directly approached it without first moving the High Court. The Court said its verdict is based on facts and circumstances of the case and does not interfere in the Speaker's power to disqualify members. The top court passed the verdict on petitions filed by these disqualified MLAs. Karnataka Chief Minister B.S. Yediyurappa has welcomed the Supreme Court decision which allows the disqualified MLAs to contest the December 5th by-election in the state. He said his party's core committee will meet this evening and finalize the candidate list for the by-election. I welcome this decision and from tomorrow onwards we are going to go all out to all the assembly constituencies, and then 1 percent, we are going to win all the 17 seats. Hailing the top court order, BJP State President Anil Kumar Katil said the election date has already been announced and the party would convene a meeting to discuss the future course of action. Former Karnataka Assembly Speaker K.R. Ramesh Kumar expressed a sigh of relief as the Supreme Court upheld his decision to disqualify 17 Congress JDS MLAs Speaking to reporters in Bengaluru today, he said he has gone by the 10th schedule, keeping in mind political and constitutional morality. The Congress Party has said the Supreme Court decision on the rebel Karnataka MLAs has exposed the BJP. Party spokesman Randeep Surjewala said it is now clear that the Congress Janta Dal secular government was forcibly brought down. He alleged that Yadirapa government is an illegitimate government in terms of law and constitution and it should be dismissed immediately. 
Mr. Surjewala also demanded probe in the matter. Congress leader Abhishek Manu Singh, we said the Yadirappa government has no moral right to continue in office anymore. Speaking to reporters, Mr. Singh, we said there is clearly an attempt by the BJP to destroy democratic values through shameless display of money power. Legally, it has vindicated the entire stand of the earlier speaker. It has upheld the disqualification order passed by him against various MLAs. It has held that resignation cannot be used as a device to avoid disqualification. In July this year, 17 MLAs were disqualified by Speaker Ramesh Kumar based on the complaints of Congress and JDS after their absence and resignation from the Assembly during the trust vote leading to the collapse of the then Kumaraswamy-led government. In another decision, the Apex Court today agreed to hear a plea filed by former Jharkhand Chief Minister Madhu Koda challenging his disqualification by the Election Commission in 2017 for not submitting poll expenses. A bench headed by CJI designate Justice S. A. Bobde took note of the submission that Koda's petition needed an urgent hearing. The last date for filing nomination for the upcoming Assembly polls is on the 18th of November. The bench ordered to list Koda's petition for hearing before an appropriate bench on Friday. In Maharashtra, political activities and consultations have gained momentum with a view to form a coalition government following imposition of President's rule. The Nationalist Congress Party started working on activities of a new coalition government, including Congress and Shiv Sena. In a meeting held in Mumbai this morning, a five-member committee of the NCP leaders has been formed to decide the common minimum program with the Congress. More from our correspondent. Sharad Pawar-led Nationalistic Congress Party, which emerged as the third largest party in 24th October Assembly polls, started working on activities of new coalition government, including Congress and Shiv Sena. In a meeting held in Mumbai this morning, a five-member committee of the NCP leaders has been formed to decide the common minimum program with the Congress. The members include Jayant Patil, Ajit Pawar, Chagan Bhujbal, Dhananja Munde and Nawab Malik. A discussion in this regard was also held between Shiv Sena President Uddhav Thakre and Congress leader Ahmed Patel yesterday, night before Patel head to Delhi. Thakre is also going to meet Maharashtra Congress leaders this afternoon. With Nivedita Bhorkar's report from Mumbai, Aarti Rana, AIR News. Earlier, Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari yesterday recommended President's rule in the state. Following the report, the Union Cabinet recommended President's rule in the state and President Ramnath Kovind signed a proclamation imposing President's rule in Maharashtra under Article 356-1. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, visit our News on AIR app and follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. You can also visit our website www.newsonair.com. Today is the last day for filing of nominations for the first phase of assembly elections in Tarkant. Scrutiny of nominations will take place tomorrow, while the last date for withdrawal of candidature is Saturday. The 81-member Tarkant Assembly will go to polls in five phases between the 30th of November and the 20th of December, and counting of votes will be taken up on the 23rd of December. The Supreme Court today directed the Centre to explore the feasibility of a hydrogen-based Japanese technology as a permanent solution to the air pollution in the NCR region and other parts of North India. The court directed the centre to expedite the deliberations on the issue and come before the court with its findings on the 3rd of next month. Meanwhile, the air quality in the national capital region continues to be in the severe category. According to Central Pollution Control Board, the air quality index AQI was recorded 453 this afternoon. It falls under the severe category. The AQI of NCR has also shown a deteriorating air quality as most of them fall under severe category. With the onset of winter, a dip in the minimum temperature is making the air cold and heavy, leading to accumulation of pollutants close to the ground. The odd-even rule has been enforced in Delhi to combat air pollution. In the wake of rising air pollution, over 2,000 students took the pledge to make the environment greener and pollution-free at Good Air Summit in New Delhi today. Former chairperson of National Green Tribunal, Justice Swetantra Kumar, administered the Good Air Pledge. 
Nearly 800 delegates and 50 experts from all walks of life are participating in the summit to share ideas and long-term solutions needed to tackle the air pollution. In Sri Lanka, campaigning for presidential elections will come to an end tonight. Polling is scheduled for this Saturday and election results are expected by Sunday. Election Commission has urged the presidential candidates not to carry out any promotional activities via social media platforms after midnight today. Minister Sajid Premadasa and former Defence Secretary Gotabaya Rajapaksa are frontrunners for the post. Janata Vimukti Paramuna leader Anura Kumara Disanayaka and former Army Commander General Mahesh Senanayaka are other prominent candidates. There are a total of 35 candidates in the fray. The election campaign has remained largely peaceful so far. Commonwealth and European Union have deployed observers across the country to monitor the election process. Around 1.6 crore voters are eligible to vote at 12,845 polling booths countrywide. In Afghanistan, at least seven people were killed and as many wounded in a car bomb explosion in Kabul today. An interior ministry spokesman said the blast occurred this morning in the Kasba area of Kabul city. The spokesman Nasrat Rahimi said the bomb had gone off in a neighborhood which is near the interior ministry and north of Kabul airport. No group has yet claimed responsibility for the blast. Indian High Commissioner in Bangladesh, Riva Ganguly Das, has said that connectivity between India and Bangladesh is a game changer. It is leading to a win-win situation for both the countries. She was speaking on the second day of the Global Dhaka Dialogue event. Ms. Das said that 80% of the $8 billion line of credit given by India to Bangladesh is earmarked for connectivity-linked projects. In Hong Kong Open Badminton, world champion P.V. Sindhu started her campaign in style by progressing to the second round. Sixth seed Sindhu took 36 minutes to see off world number 19 Kim Ga Yoon of Korea. She will face Thailand's Busanan Ongam Rungpan next. However, Saina Nehwal and Samir Varma were ousted in their respective opening rounds. In boxing, Two Indian boxers, Ankit Narwal and Aman, advanced to the quarterfinals of the Asian Youth Championships at Ulaanbaatar in Mongolia. Aman defeated Uzbekistan's Mahmudov Mimuksen 5-0 in the 60kg category. Ankit prevailed 3-2 over Mongolia's Tulga Oyunbatarin in the 91kg category. Domestic stocks today witnessed marginal losses in the afternoon trade. Equity benchmarks lost around 0.2% amid negative global queues. A short while ago, the Sensex of the Bombay Stock Exchange was down 67 points to trade at 40,278. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also slipped 27 points to 11,887. The rupee at the forex market also weakened 24 paise to 71 rupees and 71 paise against the US dollar in afternoon deals. Moving on to the world of cinema, the Golden Jubilee of the International Film Festival of India, IFI, starts on the 20th of November in Goa. The international jury at IFI comprises legendary filmmakers coming together to select the best of world and Indian cinema. Noted director, screenwriter Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra was the Indian jury member last year at IFI. He spoke exclusively to AIR. Absolutely privileged, honored and especially it's very special year for me because uh, I'm part of the international jury competition and got to see so many films. Now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi reaches Brazil to attend 11th BRICS Summit. Supreme Court upholds the disqualification of 17 Congress JDS MLAs of Karnataka but allows them to contest December 5th by polls. In Maharashtra, NCP forms a committee to decide the common minimum program with Congress. Filing of nominations for first phase of Jharkhand Assembly elections ends this evening. And world champion PV Sindhu advances to the second round of Hong Kong Open Badminton. For details of these stories and more, visit News on AIR app and log on to our website www.newsonair.com. And with that, we end the midday news. <laughs>